As autumn begins and the colours of summer fade, I like to bunker down in my craft room and make an easy junk journal. The process is so satisfying, as is the palette of colours we use. So pull up a chair and get comfy, and I'll take you through the process in six easy steps. All you need is a paper trimmer, a ruler, some scissors, a needle and string. And if you share this passion for paper, for playing with journals and paint, then hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. I've got lots more videos and ideas to come. And for step number one, you can see I have pulled a whole load of different papers from my stash. I have glorious pages from a beautiful book, some plain yellow paper, I think that's lined paper there that I'm going to tear down, graph paper's always good, and I love to include maps, old maps, in my journals. And I've chosen this one because it's got just a little bit of orange there on the page, just a touch of autumn. The paper's also a little bit thicker. I've pulled some pages from children's books and I like this one because of the size but I really like the colours and it's one of those that if you wanted to you could fold up the bottom and make it into a, a pocket so that you add something interesting into your journal. This is a piece of cardstock from an old university alumni magazine and a bit of perspective there on the cover. This glorious sheet of 12 by 12 has got that richness of texture, best creations, and I would love to use it if you look at those shades, but I'm wondering whether it's possible. The pattern is actually on the back, so I'm not sure I'll be able to do it. A plain piece of cardstock with a little bit of texture, some orange, rather bright, I'm not sure if that will go in. And a really jazzy pattern here, albeit in sumptuous oranges that really are evocative of the autumn season. I like to include music paper. This is a piece of scrapbook paper and some stunning vintage aged paper. That's definitely going to go in. Another page from a children's book. It's the orange here that I like. Again, I might fold that one up to make into a pocket. And peeping out behind, some spotty paper, rather jazzy. A little bit of cardstock, we might do some painting. Some crinkly music paper and some aged book pages. And really all I've done is just seek to tell a story with the colours and patterns, to think about what in my stash speaks of autumn. And you can have so much fun just pulling out the papers that you might use. Don't whittle it down too narrowly at this point, just put together a selection that you think might work. Go for contrast colour and what works for you. And for step number two, we decide on the cover. And I've been ogling this page for months and months. The berries, the red, the black on the page. I think it's all just a glorious choice for an autumn junk journal cover. And although the rest of the book is beautiful, it seems to me that that's more about summer. So I've decided I'll use this page for the cover. It's quite thick paper, nearly cardstock. I just need to tear it out in a very careful way. And as the paper in this book is really quite thick, I'm taking it slowly and using my scissors to cut that string. There's some really fine string or thread holding it together. So I'm snipping that carefully and easing it out. Quite excited to be using this particular page today. And here we have it in all its glory, the most beautiful autumn page from my Henry Terry Book of Flowers. And here I'm just testing using a previous junk journal I've made, the size, so that I can see where those images might come on the cover. And I'm really just checking that I want to use this right hand side. So that's what I've landed on. That's going to be the cover. So we'll just split it in two, tearing down the middle. And this is the autumn journal cover that I'm using today. And now that I've chosen my cover, I can whittle down those papers to the ones that I want to use. So here I'm just checking how they go with the colours in the cover, with the red and those beautiful rich greens and black. I'm looking at the size, I'm looking at the patterns, I'm looking at the font, 
And I'm choosing images that really speak of that story of autumn. I've chosen the map page and maybe I'll get that children's page in it. So this is just the reduced number from that stash we saw earlier. And now it's time to turn this page into the cover and I'm simply going to fold it. I'm happy to keep this torn edge, I think it gives a little bit of interest to the eye. And as I only have one signature, I'm not giving it a spine, I'm literally folding it and then putting some weight on the crease to make it nice and crisp. The size of this journal is 13 by 21 centimetres, that's about 5 by 8.5 inches. And now it's time to trim and fold the papers to make up our signature. And I'm using this fabulous picture of a squirrel that really speaks about autumn to make up the centre spread. I just keep using the cover to check the size of page that I want. So I'm folding up the bottom and giving the edge a really crisp finish. And now I have my centre spread, I'm just working through the remaining pages turning them into sizes that really work for me and that sometimes means folding with a fold out, it sometimes means trimming and it sometimes means making them into a little pocket. I like my pages to be of varying heights and widths and I'm also happy with torn edges so for this little piece of scrapbook paper I'm turning it into a bit of a fold out and I'm putting it behind the cover so that I can continue to monitor whether the colours all go together and I'm starting to think about the order in which they will go and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. This glossy piece of paper that's come from an art book I really think needs turning up and I want the image to be protected on one side so I've just put a mark so that when I fold up to make a pocket I can have as much border above that picture as below and that's how I choose where to fold my papers when I'm making a pocket. And I'll just place him behind the squirrel while I trim down the remaining pages. I like to get the very best value out of all of my crafting supplies and my scrapbook papers so one of the things I think about while I'm deciding how to fold the pages is how to get the most out of each sheet. So I will look to trim down in a way that allows me to use the remaining piece and that's another reason that I like to have differing sizes in a journal. Not only is it more interesting for the eye but I think it gives you a little bit more flexibility in how you use your pages. Here I'm folding a page from a vintage dictionary. I think you can see that the paper is quite yellow. And this is a page of different font and style. It's a sheet out of the book called Little Women. And on this occasion I'm just folding one side a little bit and that will allow me to extend that page, stick something onto it to make it bigger but still use it in an upright way because I want to see that black and white image. I've got a piece of music paper here and I might paint on that, I like to put watercolour onto the pages. A large piece here, quite glossy paper, there's a piece on the back that I don't mind covering. So I'm just working out where to fold it and it's quite a deep fold, so a lovely deep pocket, making the edge crisp and folding it over. I have a couple of other videos on how to make a junk journal so I'll link those in the description box down below in case you fancy checking those out as well. Here I'm folding a page so that the text is vertical and that's something different that you can do to make it a little bit interesting. This page I chose because of that image of a mushroom. I think that really speaks of autumn and I think I might have it at the front of the journal so that it's one of the first things you see as you open it up. So I've just taken away the image at the bottom of the sheet and now I'm working out how to make the most of the picture. I'm using the cover to size up where to trim it so that I don't have to fold and break up the picture. 
I'd love to know how your journaling changes as we move from month to month. So as the weather and the seasons change, do you take inspiration from what's around you from the changing palette of colours? Do you use different papers and patterns? And do your junk journals look different as a result? Let me know in a comment down below. I would love to hear what you're up to. And here's that rather special piece of vintage paper. You can see it goes really well with the beige colours in the cover. So I'm just folding it down and tearing it in half. And when I fold it in half, it should be a reasonable width for the journal. I think that one will work really well. This little piece of music paper is very light and crisp. And I like a bit of variety in the thickness of paper, as well as the pattern and colours and styles. And it's the green on this that I really want to highlight. So I'm turning it on its side so that I don't break that up. And although it's quite bright, I think it will work well amongst all of the other colours. Giving it a bit of a fold back. And then I'm just starting to see what I've got so that the remaining pages that I put together and choose to put in it will go with these images and patterns that have been chosen. And it feels that I have quite a lot of images and complexity in those pages. So I'm happy to choose just a really simple piece of lined paper here. And I'm just folding it over to get rid of the piece with the holes at the top. I don't want anything that looks quite so officey or modern. So I've taken that off the top. And I think I'll have a shape that's a little bit taller and thinner. So I'm just folding to give it a little bit of a fold back and a different size. And these are the papers that are going to go in our journal. There are 15 in total. We just need to put them in order and sew them in. I've turned a few of these sheets into little pockets. So I've glued down the sides on a couple of these sheets. And I thought I'd just show you how I've done it with this squirrel. I put a line of glue down the sides but none in the middle. I don't need it there. I just fold it over and there we have it. And now it's time to decide on the order of the pages. I really think this is a fun part of the process. It's where all the work of choosing and trimming and folding comes together. So I'm just picking up individual pages and putting them in an order where I get probably the most contrast as you turn the sheets. I'm making sure that I don't put, for example, one piece of music paper next to another. And if I do, then I will flick through the pages later and probably move its position in the flow. I like to see contrast of style. And I also like to see spaces where I can write opposite something that's maybe patterned and, and so I'll avoid having two plain pieces together. But this part of the process is really up to you and the, there isn't a science to it, it's whatever you think works. I know that I want the mushroom at the front as I open the journal and the squirrel in the middle, but really the rest of it is up for grabs and it's whatever I feel like. There I'm changing the position of that music page so that there aren't two next to each other. And I'm just going to insert it in here opposite that yellow sheet. I'm happy with most of these where there are two busy pages. I'll make an adjustment and the squirrel will go just in the centre. I just need a couple of pegs to hold the pages as I sew it together. I'm just using my ruler to help the pages pack really tightly together and that will help when we come to sew it in. And a couple of pegs on those pages will just keep them neatly in place. I'm comparing the cover with the size of the pages just to check how much spare I've got above and below. And now I'm just going to make some marks on that spine so that I know where to make the holes. Using a pencil, I make a mark in the middle and for a journal this size, I make another mark about six centimetres above and six centimetres below. 
and these positions will be good for holding those pages well in place. I'm using a darning needle to punch a little hole through the cover and now I'm using the holes that I've already made to mark where I want to make a hole in the signature and I find this the easiest way to reduce the risk of errors because if you have made the holes in the cover a little bit above or below where you wanted your signature will reflect that and that will keep the papers really neat and tidy in your journal. So with a little bit of wiggling and holding on to those papers keeping them in place I'm just pushing the needle through the papers checking that they're all in position as I go measuring twice and cutting once I think is the phrase so just easing the needle through the hole and getting ready for sewing it up and I just keep checking with the cover that the holes are in the place that we wanted them to be I think it's coming together what do you think I'm using regular household string to sew it up today and I measure about three and a half lengths worth and that will give me enough to tie it off at the end. I'm binding using a figure of eight starting at the top, coming through and down, out through the middle, back through the bottom and then finally back through the middle to the outside and all of this will be really clear as I take you through it step by step. So I've come through the top hole from the outside, leaving enough string so it doesn't pull through. And I'm going through the papers again from the outside, through that top hole, just wiggling my needle through each sheet. Make sure you pick each page up, the pegs will help to hold them in place. So I'm pulling the needle through and then going from the middle through that middle hole to the outside so just find where the cover is that aligns with that hole put your needle through the pages and then through the equivalent hole in the cover And at this stage you can keep the string loose, it doesn't have to be tight yet, we can do that a little bit later and having it loose will make it just that little bit easier to do the sewing. So just taking the binding through the bottom hole from the outside, making sure that the length at the top doesn't go through, you don't lose that, and then taking the needle again also through the bottom hole of the signature from the outside. It does get a little bit more difficult to see what you're doing so just take your time and it might be easier if you remove your pegs and clips just as you pull it all together. And as it starts to come together I tighten the string and finally put the needle through the centre hole from the inside ready to tie a knot to really bring it all together. At this stage I like to do one final check of the order of the pages and also whether I've got any of them upside down, I've done that before. I'm keeping the needle on at this stage, it just seems to make it a little bit easier to tie those knots, sometimes it can be fiddly. I tie two or three strong knots and then I just finish it off with a bow. There are of course lots of different methods of binding and I'd really like to know which one works best for you. Do you have any tips you can share? Drop me a comment down below. And this finishes off my really easy junk journal. It's a single signature junk journal using a book page for a cover, string to bind it and a mixture of pages within the signature. And here's a final turn of the pages just to see how it all turned out. Lots of contrast, lots of lovely papers, I feel good because I'm using my stash and I've got plenty of places to write in, to journal in, to decorate and to paint. 
If you're interested in seeing how I decorate my journals, then I'll leave a couple of links in the description box down below. And if you've enjoyed this, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and we can come back again in a week and indulge our paper passion.